Hello everyone. Today's verse of the day is our continuation, our fifth part, because we're doing a chapter a day in Daniel. So let's see, the first part, we talked about Daniel's overview, how he was captured, right? And how it talked about his overview of this whole book. He said that he was going to be above all the magicians. And we've seen that example as he's already told of two dreams to the king and, and explained their interpretation, King Nebuchadnezzar. And we've also seen a, a little bit about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, his comrades who were with him in captivity, who showed that, wow, they stayed strong with God and then fall into Nebuchadnezzar's roared things and they they survived a furnace that was heated seven times hotter than normal to kill people and they survived that then didn't survive it they weren't touched not a singe of their hair was burnt and there was a fourth person in there and that fourth person was indeed god Yeshua HaMashiach. but anyways we are now done with the the Nebuchadnezzar saga of Daniel. And now we are talking about King Belshazzar, who is Nebuchadnezzar's son. So Daniel is a little bit more of age now. And this is called the handwriting on the wall. King Belshazzar made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in front of the thousand. Belshazzar, when he tasted the wine, commanded that the vessels of gold and of silver that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, re-brought, that the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. So he wants to throw a party. Big party. Whew. But he wants to throw a party with the vessels of gold and silver out of the temple that Nebuchadnezzar stole. <sighs> The temple in Jerusalem. Nebuchadnezzar took God's vessels and he wants to party with them. Then they brought in the golden vessels that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. So they're praising false gods, fake deities with God's indeed vessels that he used for having people worship him. Immediately, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace opposite the lampstand. So say they saw this human hand appear out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Just a hand. And the king saw the hand as it wrote. Then the king's color changed and his thoughts alarmed him. His limbs gave way and his knees knocked together. The king called loudly to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans, the astrologers. The king declared to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and shows me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. So he is deadly afraid of whatever he saw that hand right on the wall. That hand right on the wall. And all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar was greatly alarmed, and his color changed, and his lords were perplexed. He was losing color in his face. He was scared tremendously. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banqueting hall. And the queen declared, O king, live forever. Let not your thoughts alarm you or your color change. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him chief of the magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, and astrologers, because an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now, 
let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Strange. I also see that the king named Daniel Belshazzar, but King Son, his name is Belshazzar. So let's not get confused. I just noticed that myself. So Daniel interprets the handwriting. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king answered and said to Daniel, you are that Daniel, one of the exiles in Judah whom the king my father brought from Judah. I have heard of you, that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the enchanters, have been brought in before me to read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they could not show the interpretation of the matter. But I have heard that you can give interpretations and solve problems, now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. So he's appeasing to his, his lust side. What, what can I give to you, Daniel? You, you go ahead and show me this. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Nevertheless, I will read the writing on the to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, kingship and greatness and glory and majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave him, all peoples, nations and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he killed and whom he would, he kept alive. Whom he would, he raised up and whom he would, he humbled. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he dealt proudly, he was brought down from his kingly throne and his glory was taken from him. He was driven from among the children of mankind and his mind was made like that of a beast and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. He was fed grass like an ox and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. And you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this, but you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. And the vessels of his house have been brought in before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know, but the God in whose hand is your breath and whose are all your ways you have not honored. Then from his presence, the hand was sent and this writing was inscribed and this is the writing that was inscribed many many tekel and parson this is the interpretation of the matter many god has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end tekel you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the medes and the persians then Belshazzar gave the command, and Daniel was clothed with purple. A chain of gold was put around his neck, and proclamation was made about him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. I bet he was hoping, that, man, if maybe if I do this, <laughs> maybe God won't do this to me. I don't know what he's thinking. But that very night, Belshazzar, the Chaldean king, was killed. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. So mind you, while they're throwing this party with these vessels, the Medes, and <laughs> Darius the Mede 
is coming to attack silently, stealthily, probably in the night. Probably the armies didn't see it. He sacked the kingdom in that very night. And the writing was written on the wall. God knew. God knew a man's heart. He knows your heart. He knows my heart. If we will ever change, if we will ever follow him. He gave mercy to Nebuchadnezzar because he knew Nebuchadnezzar would repent. But Belshazzar, his time was up. He was so brazen that he was willing to take that which is holy, that which is to be set apart, that which was in the temple of God, and drink wine and feed it and party with it. And it's one of those things we need to keep things holy and set apart. We need to keep things holy and set apart. We shouldn't worship any way besides the way the Lord wants us to worship. You know what time of year is coming. Saturnalia. If you don't know what Saturnalia is, I want you to look it up. Let's just say there's a lot of pine trees put up and decked around. Let's set apart things. Let's think, keep what is holy, holy, and keep things apart. We're going to continue tomorrow with Daniel, Daniel 6. You're going to see that Darius is now the king. He's now took over. Daniel, Darius still allows Daniel to be in his rule. And you'll see that tomorrow. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. May many be saved. Thank you for your word. Thank you for let us seeing what has transpired so we can weigh it with today's times. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.